Yes, the magnificent Beth Orton and Concrete Sky and the final one in this week's High Five. Um, so here I am. I don't know if the sound is any different, but I've moved to the big studio. And when I heard Amy Winehouse's voice, now this has got to be uh, quite a few weeks back. Somebody said, check this out. And I thought... Where has this woman been hiding uh, all of these years? And then I discovered um, that she is only 19, but that voice could have been lifted from about 50 years ago. It's been everywhere. Um, Amy is from Camden, London town, synonymous with Indy. Um, Amy's mum uh, was into stuff like Carol King and um, James Taylor, and her dad loved the jazzy side of things, Sarah Vaughan and Diana Washington, her grandmother liked the king of the old rap pack, um, Frank. Anyway, Amy picked up the guitar at 13, and uh, she did for a while go to the Sylvia Young stage school prerequisite of uh, many a soap star and girl band fodder but she was booted out for by the sounds of it being individual uh, which i can't see a problem with that but anyway um, i think that's where we're going to pick it up welcome lovely to Hello. meet you amy winehouse Hello. nice one so had you stayed at the old stage school yeah. um what would you have been doing now in a girl band in a soap or in les chicago cats miz um cats. <laughs> no i don't know you know um it was really um, good for someone who's individual, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. You know, um, it's not. I went to other stage schools that were much more kind mm. of. We want you to all sound the same. You know, Rude. Sylvia Young's was quite. It good has a like fa- that. fabulous reputation. It's, it really it's a does. Hard you see some brilliant into, yeah. people sort of moving on from from there. Mm. Um, but what's it like going to a school like that then? It was really. I loved it. You yeah. know what? Because it's not some massive child star factory mm. really I mean, it's not you know there's like 200 kids there or something mm. and when i first went there was less there was like 150 kids in this school you know the whole school and um it was just lovely it's like a family you know with that amount of people it's not like you know everyone in the whole school mm. you know and everyone was kind of cool but at what point did you realize that actually it was music that was going to be your thing i think i realized that it was music yeah over musical theater when um when i left sylvia's mm. But, you know, what cemented it was after I went to the Brit school, um, that had cemented it because I did musical theatre there. Mm. And I would sing a song, like a musical theatre song, like, you know, any jazz standard from a Mm. musical. And the singing teacher would be like, "Okay, now sing it in the style of Les Mis. And I'd be like, well, no. You know, like, um, I think that was when I realised that it wasn't for me, you know, after the Brit school. Um, You are only 19 and you must have gone through phases of, of being into all kinds of stuff. I mean, I don't know, did you go through an indie phase or a, a grunge phase yeah. or a goth phase or a drum and bass yeah. phase? Or I mean, what? Um, I liked everything. Mm. You know, at one time I liked everything that had attitude. Now I tend to listen to things more that have a groove, like a solid groove, which mm. is why I can't really get with garage. Some drum mm. and bass I can listen to, but I can't get with that music like it has to be relaxed and have a groove but yeah i went through a like a hendrix thing i went through a um like when i was about nine even because my brother was about 13 he liked all the angsty mm. stuff like um pearl jam you know um sonic youth and nirvana that kind of thing and mm. i loved all the stuff that he was into but um i always kind of remained hip-hop i always loved salt yeah. and pepper when i was very young oh fantastic and, um Left Eye was like my favourite rapper. Mm. I loved her when mm. I was a kid. I just wanted to be her. Because there was no one like Left Eye, you know. There, I didn't, there was no one else who would wear a condom on their eye in a video or yeah. would dress like a boy and get away with it because mm. she was so, she was just so cute and fresh, you know, like she had so much, so much stars. If I can say, I suppose to say a movement, but whatever, the urban thing, it has changed rapidly in... In, in a few years, hasn't it? Because I, I think, I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think we were very sort of chicken in the basket, our attitude over here. We never quite got it, got it right. What, the American stuff was much edgier, had much more yeah. going for it. But now, my God, we're, we're making great roads, aren't we? We're going great guns, I yeah, think. Yeah, I mean, you know what? It's going the other way. It's going, like, America's kind yeah. of coming down. You have people like Just Blaze, who all of his songs sound the mm. same. And then you have... Jarvon Ashanti, mm. that kind of thing, which is at the forefront in America, which, you know, obviously is not quality music, mm. I wouldn't say. You know, it sounds like they lost their, their songs sound like the last one they did and, um, and so on. And I think England, I don't necessarily think it's specific to England. I think everywhere there's going to be people that are talented that can really rhyme or mm. can really make a beat and then not necessarily in the forefront of the music industry you know it's just about who the record company is gonna put out 
You know, there's a lot of talented people everywhere. How did you get signed? How did you get noticed? I had by the time I had the, did the record though, I yeah. had management by then and publishing. Mm. So um, I think it was probably through the publishing deal that that okay. came about. Well, we'll hear some of your music now. What uh, are you going to play for us first? The first one we're going to do is called Stronger Than Me, which is the single. Great. Okay, this is Amy Winehouse. Oh, can I introduce you, by the way? Um, we've got Ian Barton. You're playing guitar on this track, are you? Yeah. Nice one. <clears throat> To be stronger than me You've been here seven years longer than me Don't you know you're supposed to be the man Not pale in comparison to who you think I am You always want to talk it through I don't care I always have to comfort you when I'm there But that's what I need you to do Stroke my hair, yeah Cause I've forgotten all a young love's joy Feel like a lady and you my lady boy You should be stronger than me but to stay, you're longer than frozen turkey. Why'd you always put me in control? All I need is for my man to live up to his role. You always want to talk it through. I'm okay. I always have to comfort you every day. Yeah. But that's what I need you to do Are you gay? Now I've forgotten all a young love joy Feel like a lady and you my lady boy He said the respect I made you earn Thought you had so many to learn I say you don't know what love is get to grieve when it sounds as if you're reading wrong so much to tell your script when I'm not gonna meet your mother anytime I just wanna grip your body over mine oh, please take Crime. Oh, yeah, I've forgotten all of young love's joy. Feel like a lady, and you, my lady boy, you should be stronger than me. Yeah, yeah, you should be stronger than me. Fantastic. That's Stronger Than Me from Amy Winehouse. Uh, and uh, obviously Amy uh, performing, uh, singing, and uh, she's playing the guitar there as well. And Ian Butter joining her own guitar as well. And watch out for the album, which is in the shops on October the 20th. It's uh, called Frank. H at what point did you discover that you could actually write songs? I mean, it's all right being able to sing and, you know, yeah. play instruments, whatever, but you can actually write a song. Um, I started writing properly when I was about, I think, 16. Yeah. Um, I'd written things before that, but I would say it only got good or got even anything, you know. Before that, it had been poetry. And even when I started properly at 16, the, uh, I didn't like them really until about a year and a half later. 
But you kept them all, did you? No, um, no? no. Like the most of the album is from the last year and a half. Right. You know, I've been doing the album for three years right. or since I had management, let's say yeah. I've been working three years and I would say two of the songs mm -hmm. from that era I've made it onto the really? album. So when you actually um, write, well, or when you were writing, when you were 16, did you go to anybody and go, what do you think of this? Like your mum or your dad? Um, your brother? Or yeah, but were you your own judge? Say, you know, it's crap because I, <laughs> I was his little sister and he wrote yeah. songs as well so he was like, your songs are crap. You know, like... <laughs> He was kind of mean like that, but um, I think I'm probably my harshest critic anyway. Mm. And if I've got to the point where I think, I'm going to play this to someone, see what they think, then I must be happy with it myself, which is all that matters really, you know. But there must have been a point where you thought, thought I can actually, th this is, this is going to be my life. This is going to be my career, yeah. you know. Yeah, I always knew I'd do music. Mm. I didn't necessarily think I'd end up writing songs, but I knew from when I was young, like really young, that I would end up, I must have thought I'd be in a musical or something like that, which I know uh, now that I could never, never do. Um, that writing songs now, I realised, is my life. But I think I always knew that music would... I would follow music always, you know. Yeah. I think I always knew that. You strike me as a pretty strong individual and that you will create your own destiny. You'd know exactly where you were going and what you wanted to do. Is that right? Did you have a plan? I, you know, I never... I've just taken everything as it's come and mm. it's kind of surprising, you know... Um, I don't think I've really planned. The only thing I can plan is just being trying to be on top of things all the time and um, performing to the best that I can, you know, and just doing everything to the best that I can. Yeah. I mean, that must be fantastic to get the reaction that you are getting. I mean, something like Giles Peterson, yeah. you know, to include you on an album is, is such a wonderful thing, isn't it? And there's Mobo. Uh, you did The Big Chill, didn't you? Was that your first gig with a band? That was my... Was that the first... Was that the first? first that was the Wait, second that? one. Second, uh, and and great reviews for that. That was fun. It, does it put you, put you under pressure, or do you just go, hey, yes, onwards? You know what? It's like um, it's so rare that I get to play with the whole band that when I do, I don't even care about who's mm. there. I'm just going crazy. Like yeah. the band's here, and I just get so excited, and um, I forget about everyone who's watching. I just, you know, it's so enjoyable mm. to play with the drums and the bass because. Um, you know, I'm kind of used to going around with Ian and we've got two guitars or a guitar and a Rhodes or, you know. So when I'm actually with the band, I'm just so excited. And, you know, I just always try and enjoy it. I don't think about any pressure or anything because it's what I love to do. Exactly, and, yeah. And, you know, it is the best feeling in the world. Well, I've got some dates I can tell people about in a moment, but presumably it'll be uh, another track from Frank that you're going to do for us now, yeah? Yeah. What is it? This is called There's No Greater Love. There's No Greater Love, Amy Winehouse, live on Radio 2. <clears throat> <clears throat>
Wow. You are in a land of your own, aren't you? A world of your own <laughs> there. Fantastic. Live on Radio 2. <laughs> Amy Winehouse, there is no greater love. And Ian Barter um, on the guitar there. Uh, fantastic stuff. Those dates, if you want to go and see Amy, with full band all of these dates, are they? Um, I should imagine I so, hope yeah. So. Uh, we've got uh, London Borderline, part of the London City Festival. That's next Tuesday. Next Wednesday, uh, the Academy Bar in Birmingham. We're planning an office outing. Uh, then you're going to the Mobos. Uh, oh. Newcastle. Well, Cumberland, Sunday the 28th, uh, Monday the 29th, Glasgow King Tuts, Manchester Arch, Tuesday the 30th, and the Bordello in Bristol. Um, you can see Amy there on the second, yeah, the second oh, of Bristol. October. It's lovely, isn't it? So looking forward really? to going to the Mobos. I can't wait. Yeah. Last year was amazing because I'd never been to an awards anything. <laughs> I was drunk, <laughs> screaming, going, hello, hello, like that. That's hello, what cool do. day was right there. It was right there. <laughs> All Did the you women touch him? Were, almost. He looks so fit for his age. He's, He's just really incredible, does. isn't he? he Absolutely. Really does. Who else? I mean, who who are your <laughs> you know other heroes that you kind of think? Oh, I'd like to touch you. I'd like to meet um, you. How long have we got? Oh, um, <laughs> no. You know, there's there's peop- There's so many people. I, mm. I would not know where to start. Are the people from the past, I mean, just thinking about your dad's record collection, because mm. that voice, where did it, your voice come from? Did you open your mouth and that was it? That's the way you sang? No, I used to sing more musical theatre, kind yeah. of Liza, kind of, the show is going to go out, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> like, like, like Ethel Merman. <laughs> all that kind of, yeah, like, um, that's kind of overdone, though. Mm. So I think, you know, every, all the women's voices, I guess, I ever listened to, it's kind of come out like that. And, you know, I listen to a lot of... Uh, instrumental jazz as well and yeah. I take a lot from uh, like a solo like a sax solo there's mm. things you know you can't deny these things and they come through I guess they just come through do people think you're black until they see you are there some people who think that because you can't some, some people yeah. yeah some people not everyone yeah. I mean there's a couple of people that said oh you're not black oh you're young oh <laughs> shit like you know and um, so but not everyone Says that at all, no. But I mean, it, it does have that that kind of feel that you know it's, the voice is very mature that it's been around. I don't mean that in a, a negative way, but you know it has got a maturity and a depth that quite often you don't get oh, in somebody. You. you see, who's nineteen? Um, right, you're going to do your final tune for us before you disappear back down that motorway uh, to London. <laughs> What's it been like? I mean, it's, do you think it's crucial um, for what you're doing to have grown up in London? Or not? I'm sorry, say that again. Was it, it, it being living in the capital? Do you think it's it's a huge help? It must be. You know what? There's so much stuff that people get from the city. You know mm. everything. You get every as far as I'm concerned, because I'm a city girl. You know that's the only place I've ever lived. But um, I mean, Ian's the opposite. Ian's like country boy, and I'm uh-huh. like city girl. And um, but it works. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, people take a lot from the city. Mm. I think anyone who writes can take a lot from whatever, mm. you know, whatever's re- around them. But the city, yeah, it's always been, I um, uh, can't think of the word, but, you know, it's always been there for me to draw from. Mm. You know, li- there's life everywhere, you know, in all shapes and sizes. Certainly is, girl. Right, <laughs> what's your final tune going to be? This is called um, In My Bed. OK, now you're going to play... The Wurlitzer now, aren't you? Mm. The Wurlitzer on legs. Um, Okay, here it is. Wish I could say it breaks my heart Like you did in the beginning It's not that we grew apart A nightingale no longer singing It's something I know you can't do Separate sex with emotion sleep alone the sun comes out there and you're still clinging to some notion everything is slow Oh, 
never give mama right like two ships passing in the night in the night in the night i want the same thing when we lay otherwise mine's a different way the different way from where you're going oh it's you again Listen, this is a never unique gang, yeah, so sorry, yeah, if I turn my head, yours is a familiar face, but that don't make your place safe, my bed, my bed. we had could be intruded but I couldn't let it be Love. I needed it as much as you did now it's not hard to understand why we just speak at night the only time Ships passing in the night, in the night, in the night. You want the same thing when we lay, otherwise, mind a different way. It's a different way from where you're going. Oh, I wish you again. Listen, this is a reunique and so sorry. And in my bed, Ian Butter there on the world. It's uh, uh, that track, that's on the album uh, Frank, which is in the shops October the 20th. Uh, the single, Stronger Than Me, that's um, the week mm. after next, isn't it? That's in the shops yeah. October the 6th. Uh, what did your brother make of you now? Does he still think you're crap? Oh, my, <laughs> he said the sweetest thing, and he did will he? probably be so embarrassed if oh. he ever hears this. He turned around to me the other day, and my brother's proud, like you wouldn't believe. He's mm. a proud man, he has so much pride. Gay pride, <laughs> and um, he turned around to me today, uh, the other day, and he said, "You know what? You're an incredible singer." And Aww. he just said it so, and that's the best oh, thing he's oh, ever lovely. said to me. Lovely. My dad's probably somewhere crying now. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> you remember dad? Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Winehouse. Um, and well, nice one, and thank you so much for coming up to see us. It really is thank much you. appreciated. Thank and I'll probably pop in and see you at the academy in Birmingham yeah, uh, next week. Wicked. Nice one. And um, I think we've got signed promo things to give away um, after this next track. We, oh, can I just say thank you to Carwin as well? He's worked his little socks off thank engineering you. all of this. Nice one, Carwin. Um, REM, Orange Crush. <laughs> 